In honor of this episode coming out on Independence Day, I want to talk about three steps that you can take to reach financial independence as a woman in business. You are listening to the Profit and Prosper podcast, the podcast that helps you pay yourself six figures from your business without having to sacrifice your life today. So a lot of people will tell me that one of the main things they want from their businesses is financial freedom. But when I ask them, okay, how are we going to get there or what steps are you taking now to reach financial freedom, they either don't know, they don't have a clear answer, or they just focus on what they're doing in terms of sales. I've done tons of episodes on why making more sales is not going to help you reach financial freedom. And so I'm going to skip that for today. We'll put some links to some other episodes that you might enjoy down in the description. I'm going to give you a high level three steps that you can bake into your financial strategy for your business so that you can actually be actively taking steps toward financial independence. And this is a bit of an update on an episode that I did two years ago. I think it was episode 20, where I talked about how do you turn your business's cash flow into wealth. In the last couple of years, I have worked with a lot more women on not just their businesses and profitability within their businesses, but on saving more money and investing and all of the mindset that plays into all of your money stuff and growing your businesses. So I've really sort of streamlined the way that I approach your financial independence goals. So the first step in reaching financial independence as a business owner is cash flow. Cash flow from your business, meaning your business produces a profit and it produces cash that you can then in turn take out of the business and put into your personal bank account. So how do we build a business that produces cash flow? Well, that is the point of the whole podcast. I won't go into all of the details on that either, but I do wanna say that one of my core beliefs is is that we probably all need to aim for building a business that does closer to 250K in revenue rather than 100,000, 250K or more. For me, it's not worth it if I'm not able to make at least six figures in take-home pay from my business every year. So that means I'm making more than $100,000 in profit for my business. And you're not gonna do that on $100,000 in sales. You need at least probably 250 to 300,000 in revenue in order to make that kind of money. For a lot of people listening, I know you have corporate jobs maybe you don't have, but you have had corporate jobs where you did make well into the six figures. And if you're going to put the same effort or more into your business, don't we all want to make a better return? So step one is to prioritize cash flow, prioritize building your business in a super profitable way. And I do want to remind you that my free profit plan challenge will help you map out that exact strategy. In my challenge, I will send you daily trainings and daily assignments and a workbook to walk you step by step through my process for creating a highly profitable, sustainable, and aligned business that helps you make more money without having to work longer hours. So go get that at the link in the description or sarahyoung.com forward slash profit plan. So as you're building your business up, and obviously once you've reached that goal, whatever your revenue target is, and you're able to make a solid paycheck from your business, financial independence comes from what do you do with that money? So step two to financial independence is to start investing. And my updated take for simplicity's sake is I think every woman listening to this podcast, you need to have a goal of investing $100,000 from your business into a retirement or brokerage account as quickly as you can. When I've worked with clients and we set goals for how much do we want to be saving and investing, of course, having the tax background that I have, I want to layer in tax strategies and all of that. And I also want to layer in your retirement planning and how much you need. And honestly, I think all of that is great, but the reality is we all know we're going to need more than $100,000 invested anyways. What if we instead just shifted our mind to, you know, instead of having this huge, big retirement goal, because most people's retirement goals are pretty massive and it can feel really overwhelming. What if we just set a target of how quickly can we put $100,000 in the bank from our businesses? Some of you can do this in a year or less. Some of you, it might take five years to do. Some of you, it might take 10 years to do. And that's totally fine. The important thing is that you start shifting the way that you view the cash flow from your business as not just money that pays the bills, but also money that is set aside for your future. A lot of business owners will want to defer or like push back these sort of savings and investing type activities because they think that the payoff they're going to get down the road from their business is going to be so massive. And to that, I would say, yeah, that's absolutely absolutely a possibility, but also you're doing yourself a disservice if you just keep 
putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and not building the habit of saving. Because what I find is if you don't have the habit of saving now, when your business grows and when your revenue grows and you're making more money, you're not automatically just gonna start saving more money. So we need to start building the habits now, even if the dollar amounts are small, even if you're not saving as much as you would like to be saving, building the habit is more important than anything else, I think. Now there's a reason that I think $100,000 in the bank is a milestone that everyone should aim for. One is because it'll build the habit, like I said. Two is because it puts you on the path to something called coast fire. And that's because of something else called compound interest. That's where you put money into an investment account account, it earns interest. And then that interest earns interest. And then it keeps compounding and snowballing over time to where the interest in your account that you've earned can outpace the amount that you've actually invested, which is something that we all obviously would love to have more of. If you can get $100,000 invested into just a regular old index fund in your retirement and or brokerage account and leave it for 33 years without touching it, that money is going to grow to a million dollars based on historical average stock market returns. So what would you do if you knew that you had, no matter what, you had a million dollars sitting there waiting for you in retirement that's ready to go so that even if all of your other plans failed in the in the short term or in your business, you've got that in your back pocket and that no matter what happens, you have at least some income in retirement. It makes me feel a lot more at ease knowing that I've got almost a safety net so that if my other you know, business plans fail, then I'm totally covered. And that's really what Coast Fire is. F-I-R-E stands for Financial Independence, Retire Early. You might have heard me talk about this a little bit in previous episodes on the podcast. Coast Fire means that you have enough money invested to where you're covered in retirement. What you're working for now is just your living expenses and discretionary spending. You don't actually have to generate any additional money to save and invest. And I would like to add that if you have $100,000 in the bank and you're thinking 33 years until get to a million is a really long time to wait. When you have that much money in the bank, adding a little bit extra can actually get you there a lot faster. So if you add $6,000 a year on top of your 100, you will get to a million dollars in 25 years instead of 33. And if you increase your investments to $14,000 a year, which is a little over $1,000 a month, then that would get you to a million dollars in 20 years instead of 33. Again, thanks to the power of compound interest. Now, what most of my clients do when they already have have that $100,000 invested or they're on track to have a million dollars or more in their retirement accounts when they retire, they work to generate passive income right now. So passive income is where you have income that comes into your bank account that you don't have to work for. So you don't have to show up to your business to generate this income. It just happens. It, it lands in your bank account whether you work or not. This is how we really become work optional because I would say most clients I work with don't necessarily care about traditional retirement. What they do care about is being work optional, having the freedom, having the choice. And that comes from having an income hitting, hitting your bank account, whether you show up to your laptop that day or not. Passive income can come in a lot of different forms, but it might include things like additional brokerage account investments where you're getting dividends and interest on the money you invest. That is the most passive income you could probably get. I have a lot of clients who are really interested in real estate. So whether, whether it's Airbnb or long-term rentals, those are certainly less passive than brokerage accounts, but more passive than having to work in your business. And so they'll start investing their extra money into real estate, which also has some really great tax breaks. We also have a lot of clients who are interested in buying other businesses, buying franchises. I've talked about buying a business too, and I'll probably do it again at some point in the future. I really like to have a laundromat one day or a car wash or something like that, something super boring and less labor intensive than my accounting firm is. Buying a business and being the business owner is not nearly as passive again as dividends or investment income, but it's still additional sources of income that you can invest in now and get some really great tax breaks and have some good solid income coming in before you retire. So that's it for this episode, y'all. The three steps to financial independence as a female entrepreneur are making really great cash flow from your business, investing $100,000, and then 
then generating passive income from your other investments so that you can be work optional. So if you need to design a business that is more profitable, more sustainable, and more aligned with the way that you want to live your life and run your business, and if you wanna get yourself on track to being able to invest $100,000, then your next step is gonna to be to get my free profit plan challenge at sarahhyoung.com forward slash profit plan. Inside the High Profit Society, which is my community for women who are working toward creating financial freedom through profitable businesses, I have an entire course on money, on how to save money from your business. And it is that skill set that is going to help you invest that money faster. All right, that's it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you back next time.